Welcome to lesson 13 of uh, module 1 and 2 for investigating science and in this lesson uh, we're going to be looking at the inquiry question what inferences can be drawn from observations and we're going to be focusing on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So take a minute now to answer the do now. Would you eat this plant? Why or why not? So pause the video now until you've answered that question. Okay, so having a look at your answer, okay, I would recommend not eating this plant. So this Morton Bay chestnut or a black bean is actually poisonous. And Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have used these observations and inferences for thousands of years, okay, and this is one of the examples we'll look at today. So we're going to be looking at the leaching of tox toxins and how they um, make sure those are out of any of their bush tucker and how they would locate sources of fresh water within saltwater bodies. And then we're going to take a quick look at the biases that exist um, based on the European settlers and what they used to think about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people's understanding um, based on their connection to country. So uh, we're going to be looking at bush tucker. Um, we're going to be doing a rigorous reading and we can see here in the success criteria, okay, um, that we are going to have a big focus on how we can demonstrate our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander capability here and being able to uh, respectfully discuss Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So leaching is a process in which water soluble substances are dissolved into surrounding water. And this means that the substances are transported and removed from the source. So Aboriginal people had to determine the correct technique to use to prepare different foods that they would find in their um, country. And then they'd be able to make appropriate inferences about whether it would be poisonous or whether it was safe to eat. And so take a minute now to read this paragraph here. So in different areas of Australia, there are different uh, types of geographical variation. So we go from some arid zones to really lush rainforests. And there is such a diverse array of plant and animal species that uh, can be used for hunting, used for eating, and used for a, a range of different things. And Indigenous people of Australia travelled around on this country um, in their traditional homelands, sourcing foods that were seasonal. So they didn't appear all of the time. And this knowledge was kept by... Uh, people within the community about which plants they would see when they would see them and what that meant for the seasons they were in. These traditional practice, practices were le less common after European invasion, but there are still many groups um, that use bush food in their diet or for medicinal purposes. Um, and so in terms of preparing food, there were different ways that Indigenous people prepared their food. So grinding, roasting, boiling, steaming and rinsing. Um, and this was especially important to make sure it was prepared just right um, because there were some substances that if they were prepared in the correct way, meant that they were um, no longer poisonous to people eating them. So this YouTube video is linked on your website, on your Google Classroom, okay? Um, so it does go for four minutes, so make sure you give yourself some time and you can use this link on the video to watch that. The activity I want you to undertake now is to answer the question, why has this method of keeping knowledge been a disadvantage for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people? So Aboriginal uh, family groups speak in many languages, and didn't often record and keep written records. And so um, because of these families becoming fragmented and dispossessed of their traditional lands, much of the traditional knowledge of local food plants was lost. Um, so I want you to answer that question. So why has it been a disadvantage not being able to write it down um, and have a record for later? And then once you've done that, I want you to complete the collaborative Google slide. So everyone's going to add a slide onto the Google slides that you'll find on your classroom. And I would like you to research one plant, okay, an image of it and how it was prepared to make sure the toxins were leached. So pause the video now and complete that activity. The other part of this descriptor that we're looking at is how it was possible to locate fresh water within bodies of salt water. So Fresh submarine groundwater discharge, otherwise known as SGD, has been used as a resource for a very long time. Um, and it's 
used more in remote communities around the globe. Um, so this is where terrestrial groundwater discharges into the sea um, and it's controlled by aquifers that are underneath um, the ground, uh, usually at, like the water table, okay, and this is discharging, so being put out into the sea, which we know is salt water. Um, we can use these SGDs for drinking, hygiene, agriculture, fishing and for spiritual use. So an ex a couple of examples in Australia. So there's Ellen Beach in Australia, um, which is also referred to as Biobindi. And it's an ocean in the local language of the Guru Yirimir people. Um, and so we can see here in the diagram over here, this wonky hole, okay, where the salinity uh, based on this color. So this area here where it's bluer is lower in salinity. So this is where they were actually finding uh, bodies of salt water. So we do call those wonky holes. Um, and because they are fresh water, uh, they provide a different species of fish than they would in salt water. Um, so this area um, is very popular amongst fishermen. So now I'd like you to complete the rigorous reading activity.